and this is from the south. 36,000 doses of the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine arrived in Paraguay on Friday through the World uh, Health Organization COVAX platform. A COVID-19 uh, up surge has pushed the South American country's health system to the verge of collapse. According to the health authorities, the doses will be first administered to health workers. The badge is in addition to the 20,000 doses of the Chinese Sinovac vaccine donated by Chile and 4,000 Sputnik V doses purchased from Russia which will allow the vaccination of 90% of the medical personnel involved in the fight against the pandemic. Brazil's largest city, Sao Paulo, is struggling to curb the spread of COVID-19 despite the restrictive measures. Mayor Bruno Covas said that new restrictions have done nothing to stem the flow of people taking buses and trains in and out of the city every day. With hospitals at full capacity, the mayor announced further restrictions of movement within the city ahead of upcoming holidays. We cannot just talk. We have medication for an average of 20 days. Of course, industry is producing and replacing it, but demand is higher. And if it collapses, we will not have a way to intubate patients. And then we will have a second problem, besides not having ICU beds in which we are already seeing deaths for lack of ICU beds, we will have deaths for lack of medicines. Political parties in Venezuela are preparing for the upcoming regional electoral process. At the same time, institutions continue with their renovation processes or the confirmation of new authorities. We have more details with our correspondent, Leonel Radamal. Political leaders from 20 opposition parties in Venezuela recently signed an agreement to stand united in the upcoming elections for regional governors and mayors that will take place in Venezuela this year, following the path of those who participated in the parliamentary elections of December 2020. They seek to isolate extremist opposition groups that promote violence or a total boycott of the vote. We do not support insurrectional or unconstitutional methods or foreign invasions or other countries harming our sovereignty in detriment of our people who have only prevented us from successfully taking power, prolonging the suffering of the most vulnerable and dispossessed. The international community is called to pay attention to these processes and not to those who continue to demand sanctions against the country. The Venezuelan people are peaceful. We believe in our constitution and we want to solve things through the constitutional path. These actions are by a minority that does not represent us. We are more than 30 million people. The international community does not have to sit down and talk with just five parties. We are more than that. We are more than 30 opposition parties. They have to listen to all of us, the population in general. We are in crisis and these sanctions have aggravated the situation. This is happening alongside the work of several parliamentary commissions, such as that in charge of carrying out the process to renew the National Electoral Council. 75 nominations for rector of the Electoral Council have been accepted, and the process is still open to renew this state power. For both this committee and this National Assembly, the only objective is that we can live in peace, that we take a step to distance ourselves from those who have made a living from violence and think the solution is not democratic. For this committee and this assembly, democracy is the only path in an electoral center. All this is part of a process of dialogue and normalization between the public authorities of the Venezuelan state after the installation of the new National Assembly on January 5th. Commissions investigating the management of the former legislative administration are joining efforts of the Dialogue Committee, which seeks meeting points between the different sectors of society. This analyst explains it the following way. A big debate is happening right now in Venezuela for the relativization not only of the National Electoral Council as the regulatory body, but also the different branches of the state to move forward as a single voice without denying the different voices within Venezuelan society, but with a need to see ourselves, to recognize ourselves as a single country. Meetings with business representatives, churches, universities, political parties and different social and economic sectors in the country have already taken place as part of this process.
Argentina's Supreme Court of Justice has rejected an appeal filed by Google and ruled in favor of Vice President Cristina Fernandez regarding her defamation lawsuit against the Internet giant. The country's top court rejected the appeal filed in October 2020 in which Google requested its intervention to review a previous ruling that Google must provide access to its multinational server to collect evidence in the case filed by the Vice President. Google claimed review of its uh, servers represented a violation of commercial secrets. The case runs a search result from the er engine in which her title appeared as Chief of the Argentine Nation instead of Vice President. Full, uh, following the latest ruling, Google must hand over all the data associated with Christina Kirchner's name from May 17, 2020. Mexican President Andrés Manuel López Obrador expressed uh, his gratitude to his U.S. counterpart Joe Biden on Friday for sending 2.7 million doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine to the country. López Obrador added that the shipment of vaccines from the United States, plus those that have arrived from Russia, China, and the Pfizer lab, his government is making progress in the national vaccination plan. The White House say it planned to ship millions of doses of AstraZeneca's COVID vaccine to Mexico and Canada. To date, Mexico has received over 7 million vaccine doses of different brands, of which it had administered over 4.7 million. In Bolivia, citizens took to the streets on Friday to demand justice for the victims of the 2018 coup carried out against former President Evo Morales. Several uh, social movements gathered in Morillo Square in the city of La Paz to demand that the state institutions ensure justice in the face of violent events that occurred during the 2018 coup and the 11 months that follow, which saw the deaths of over 30 Bolivians. Former political prisoners also participated in the mobilizations who denounced having suffered torture and various violations of their rights by police. Ecuador's National Electoral Council is preparing contingency plans in the face of possible weather emergencies ahead of the second round of the presidential election to be held on April 11. Officials of the electoral body continue to tour different voting districts to ensure that everything is in the place for the April ballot. In several provinces, polling stations have been affected by floods and landslides as consequence of heavy rainfall. Electoral authorities say that they expect have all voting sites ready in time and guarantee the best conditions for the day when all Ecuadorians will choose the next president and vice president. In Uruguay, formal political prisoners who suffered sexual abuse during the military dictatorship of 1973 to 1985 have presented their case to the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights. 28 women filed a criminal complaint in the country 10 years ago, but with few developments in the case, they decided to approach the regional body. Their complaint targets more than 100 uh, regime officials, doctors, well, psychologists and security forces members, none of whom have been convicted of any crimes. According to Maria Noel Leoni of the Center for Justice and International Law, sexual violence uh, was a weapon of war used, to used by the state to humiliate and punish political prisoners. Torture, killings, enforced disappearance and other uh, human rights violations were committed during the nearly 12-year dictatorship imposed after the coup in 1973. We denounce more than 100 people officers, doctors, psychologists, troop personnel, and only one of them was prosecuted not for torture and sexual violence, which he confessed within the framework of the process, but for repeated crimes of deprivation of liberty. According to civil society, more than 70% of the approximately 200 open cases are in the initial stages of investigation, including this case. There have been convictions in only 14 trials against 30 people and there are unprocessed complaints against more than 60 accused. We'll take a short break now, don't go away.
these are due to reverse the damage we cause to the planet. Let's recover our natural ecosystems with actions in defense of the environment. Let's keep fighting for a greener world. Wednesdays, only on Tolosua. Organizations, vaccine safety experts gave renewed back backing to AstraZeneca's COVID-19 vaccine on Friday, having reviewed reports of blood clotting after immunization. The committee has concluded that the available data do not suggest any overall increase in clotting conditions following administration of the Oxford-AstraZeneca vaccine. As a result, the committee has recommended that the AstraZeneca vaccine's benefits outweigh its risks with tremendous potential for preventing infections and deaths from COVID-19. German Chancellor Angela Merkel stated on Friday that she was ready to be vaccinated with the AstraZeneca's coronavirus jab. Various European countries remain concerned over rare blood clot uh, reports despite health authorities concluding the vaccine is safe. Yes, I would take the AstraZeneca vaccine. I would like to wait until it's my turn, but I would in any case. And the German Chancellor also pointed out that she is ready to order the Russian Sputnik V vaccine for the country once it's author authorized by the European Union. The federal government and the regional authorities have agreed to speed up vaccination in the country with more than 17,000 cases of the coronavirus were reported in 24 hours, about 5,000 more than a week ago. Germ Germany on Friday resumed use of the Anglo-Swedish AstraZeneca com company's jabs and politicians were at pains to assure the population of the vaccine's safety. Germany had initially limited use of the vaccine to people under 65 years old because of insufficiency uh, uh, data from older people. Belgian Prime Minister Alexander de Croo has said that the country faces crucial weeks ahead of the number of coronavirus cases continues to rise. The coming weeks will be crucial. Since our last consultation meetings, numbers kept rising. They rose step by step. We could say that we are on a raising plateau, and we see that figures are increasing. This increase was foreseen in our expert models. It was expected to have an increase in positive cases, an increase in hospital admissions. But what we see is that those increases are faster than expected. We cannot ease the measures as we planned for April. We cannot do that now. We are pressing the pause button and keep April 19 as a target. After Easter holidays, we would like very much that after Easter schools should reopen normally. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson received a first dose of the AstraZeneca's COVID vaccine on Friday at a London hospital where he fought the disease almost a year ago. Johnson's vaccination came a turbulent week in which his government resisted calls from opposition politicians over the handling of the pandemic and amid uh, growing concerns that his vaccine rollout might have hampered a drop in supplies. AstraZeneca's job provides the bulk of the United Kingdom's vaccination campaign and a large portion of the supply has been produced by the Serum Institute of India. The United Kingdom has uh, recorded the highest numbers of COVID-19 related deaths in Europe at over 126,000. The government's uh, failure to act faster to curb the spread of the coronavirus and provide sufficiency resources for the national health system have been widely condemned. The Italian government approved a 32 billion euro economic relief package for coronavirus restricted business and workers. Prime Minister Mario Drag called the decree a partial answer to those who are struggling with the fallout from the pandemic. Around 8 billion euros were earmarked from uh, welfare support 
including for fallen and unemployed workers and almost 5 billion euros for vaccination and the health sector. A freeze on jobs dismissals expiring in late March was prolonged until the end of June June, with a further extension until late October valid for some industries. Meanwhile, the PM said the plans to be vaccinated with the AstraZeneca shot. Bosnia is facing a new wave of coronavirus pandemic with its capital Sarajevo reporting its deadliest month since the pandemic began a year ago. A fresh spike of coronavirus cases pushed the Bosnian main COVID-19 hospital into crisis on Monday as battles one of the world's highest fatality rates. Meanwhile, only limited quantities of vaccine have arrived in the country so far. The country has uh, received shipments of the Russian-made Sputnik V vaccine and the Oxford AstraZeneca jab as the donation by neighboring Serbia. At the same time, the government has expressed its disappointment about delays to the COVAX initiative aimed at security doses for poor nations. More stories coming up. Stay with us. Innovation, science, the technological breakthrough and its influence in society. Viajeros del saber, el futuro está aquí. Atman. Monday, only on Telesur. Pakistan's Prime Minister Iram Khan has tested positive for the coronavirus two days after he received the first dose of vaccine. According to his doctor, the Prime Minister has quarantined himself at his private home on a Istanbul suburbs. The diagnosis uh, comes as the country grapples uh, with a deadly third wave of the virus that has already killed nearly 13 thousand eight hundred people from more than six thousand six hundred thousand infections also limited testing suggests past, real right figures now, are I likely much higher all of us this one tokyo olympics and paralympics organizers have announced that overseas spectators will not be permitted to attend this summer's arranged games due to the ongoing coronavirus pandemic the Olympic Games, which were originally scheduled to take place last year, are due to begin on 20, 23 of July, and tickets purchased overseas through official channels will be refunded. Uh, our first priority uh, was, is, and remains uh, the safety of all uh, participants of uh, the Olympic Games uh, and, of course, uh, the uh, Japanese uh, uh, people. You. Uh, very, very much uh, for uh, setting priorities uh, like uh, safety also means uh, that uh, then uh, you have uh, to uh, respect these uh, priorities. And that means uh, that uh, you uh, will have and we will have uh, to uh, take difficult decisions. Sir, uh, you have the floor that uh, we have uh, to take uh, decisions uh, which uh, may uh, you know need uh, sacrifice from uh, from uh, uh, everybody uh, and uh, there where we ha have to ask for the understanding there also of uh, everybody uh, for uh, these uh, difficult uh, decisions respecting uh, this uh, priority of the safety of uh, the uh, Olympic Games. Long dormant volcano in southwestern Iceland have erupted. 
Iceland Civil Protection Agency says Saturday that it has lowered the threat level as lava flow from the Fagaldas Montane volcano seems to be listened. The Department of Emergency Management said it was not anticipated evacuations uh, because the volcano is in a remote valley 2.5 kilometers from the nearest road. The Fagaldas Mont Mountain volcano had been dormant for 6,000 years but there have been signs of possible eruption recently, with earthquakes occurring daily for the past three weeks. I think we are uh, excited uh, because it's it's not so uh, heavy or or grave. It's not in danger or nothing like that. So it's I think people are excited and excited and. and um, also they are not uh, af afraid of it. We've just been monitoring the area. Uh, at first uh, people were not allowed to walk to the possible volcano area, but now people are allowed to walk, so basically we're just monitoring, making sure that people park safely. And U.S. President Joe Biden has denounced rising violence against Asian Americans on Friday, telling a community plunge into grief after this week's shootings in Atlanta that the nation must not be complicit with faith in the face of racism and xenophobia. President Biden emphasized that the increased violence and harassment against Asian Americans since the start of the coronavirus pandemic, fueled by former President Donald Trump. After meeting with leaders of Georgia's Asian American community, Biden said that hate and violence have often been met with silence in the United States. The Iranian Atomic Ener Energy Organization have announced that it will call test its redesigned Iraq nuclear reactor ahead of its full inauguration later this year. The spokesman for the organization, Berghuz Kamal Bandi, say that the, test, uh, that the test will take place early in the Iranian New Year that begins this Sunday. Iran agreed to shut down the reactor at Iraq yeah, under the 2019-2015 nuclear deal with the six world powers. But following the Trump administration's uh, unilateral withdrawal from the deal in 2018 and subsequent reimposition of U.S. sanctions, Tehran began expanding its nuclear activities. It planned to use the Iraq reactor to make isotopes for medical and agricultural use. The foreign minister of Turkey and Iran held a meeting to strengthen bilateral relations on Friday in which they ana analyzed the situation in Syria and seek to coordinate the joint fight against terrorism. On a visit to Istanbul, Iranian uh, foreign minister Mohammad Javad Sarif ratified the strengthening of political, economic and commercial relations between the two countries alongside with his Turkish counterpart Melvud Kabul Halud since uh, 2017, Tehran and uh, Ankara, joined by Russia, have been mediating peace negotiations in Syria, amid that counteracting Washington's unilateral measures against the Arab country. Thousands protested in the Algerian capital, Algiers, on Friday as the anti-government Hirak movement resumed its weekly demonstrations despite the ban on gatherings due to the coronavirus pandemic. The Iraq protest movement emerged in February 2019 in, oppo in opposition to the Tehran, uh, to the then president Abdel Boutafak bid for the fifth term in office. The protests forced Boutafak to step down weeks later, but the, go the movement continued to mobilize, demanding the sweeping overhaul of the country's political system. The Global Climate Strike Movement, Fridays for Future, resumed activities on Friday with demonstrations in over 800 cities. The youth-led protests seek to raise awareness regarding climate change and demand better policies from governments and companies. The movement is beginning to resume its street sit-ins and other demonstrations after turning to social media through 2020 due to the coronavirus pandemic. Groups in Germany, Spain and the United States have called for rallies and marches. Several hundred youth gatherings in Paris as part of the Youth for Climate Organization inspired by environmental activists Greta Thunberg. And we come to the end of this news brief. You can find these and many other stories in our website at telesorenglish.net.
and join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For Telesur English, I'm Jose Daniel Lopez. Thank you for watching. Thank <laughs> you.